Everyone knows the story. Using groundbreaking techniques, scientists bring long extinct animals back from the dead. For a while, everything is fine. The creatures even become a star tourist attraction. But things soon go horribly wrong. Then, it was just science fiction. But now, some scientists claim they can soon make it a reality. There's even a theme park of sorts already under construction in Siberia, where living woolly mammoths may one day roam, a creature that has been extinct for thousands of years. So, as incredible, as impossible as it sounds, is Jurassic Park about to come true? In 1990, Michael Crichton's best-selling book took the world by storm, mixing real science with plenty of action. It was soon followed by a sequel and went on to spawn one of the biggest film franchises of all time. The basic plot is simple. Scientists manage to take DNA, the code that determines the makeup of every living creature, from the blood of long-extinct dinosaurs. Then, using genetic engineering to combine it with the DNA of living animals, bring those dinosaurs back to life. But they haven't fully anticipated the implications of releasing extinct animals back into the world, and the creatures take over. To echo the most famous line from the franchise, life finds a way. Despite scientists' best efforts to stay in control, nature takes its own course, with deadly results. At the time the books and original films were released, experts were quick to point out that while it might be theoretically possible, actually doing any of this certainly wasn't. But now, it seems science has found a way. In laboratories around the world, from South Korea and Japan to Russia and America, scientists are working to revive one animal in particular, the spectacular woolly mammoth, a creature that ruled many parts of the world for millions of years, and whose remains are often found stunningly preserved. But how could that be done? And what implications would it have for our planet? In principle, there are a number of methods that could bring extinct animals back from the dead. In Michael Crichton's book and the later films, DNA was recovered from preserved dinosaur blood. Any gaps in the DNA sequence were filled with frog DNA. Theoretically, that sort of gene editing is possible. But you wouldn't get a dinosaur. Instead, you'd get a frogosaur, a mixture of both creatures. Without a complete dino DNA sequence, you'd never have a complete dinosaur. An alternative approach would be through cloning, removing the nucleus from a cell of a host creature and replacing it with the nucleus from a cell of the animal you want to revive. But in practice, breeding one species using another species as a host is far more complicated. Place chicken cells into a goose egg, and you still don't get a chicken. Theoretically, it could even be possible to use a preserved sperm cell from an extinct species to artificially inseminate a living host, with the resulting creature being born naturally, if you could find a suitable host and viable million-year-old sperm. And that was the big stumbling block with any of these ideas. Even if you could overcome the other problems, no viable genetic material had ever been retrieved from any extinct species, let alone a dinosaur. And though many well-preserved woolly mammoths had been studied over many years, no usable samples had ever been recovered from those specimens, though they were, relatively speaking, far younger and fresher. Only a few dried specks of mammoth blood had ever been found, and the DNA that had been identified was too degraded for the technology of the time to work with. It was thought that perhaps DNA could not survive for more than a few thousand years. Deep freezing tissues also destroys the cells in it, making the recovery of viable genetic material even less likely. But over recent years, improved techniques and some incredible discoveries might just have made the impossible possible. The preserved remains of mammoths and other prehistoric creatures have been emerging from the frozen soils of Siberia for hundreds of years. Evidence suggests that many died after becoming trapped in muddy bog land. Their bodies, quickly freezing solid, remained perfectly preserved beneath the ice for sometimes tens or even hundreds of thousands of years. Increasingly, though, global warming has meant that more and more of the Siberian tundra has been melting, revealing far better preserved prehistoric remains than ever before. 
In 2013, scientists from the Siberian Northeastern Federal University made perhaps the most stunning discovery yet. A mammoth carcass being excavated on the remote Mali Lyakovsky Island began to ooze dark red liquid as it was lifted. More was found pooled under the body. Unbelievably, an estimated 40,000 years after its death, this mammoth still had liquid blood in its body. On top of that, its tissues were so fresh that one scientist actually took a bite of the meat. Finally, scientists had what they needed and were able to decode and publish the complete mitochondrial DNA sequence of a long-extinct creature. At the same time, the technology for recovering and engineering DNA had also been improving rapidly. New techniques to extract ancient DNA from bones and teeth meant it was possible to get usable data from smaller and more degraded samples than ever before, even from samples that were not just thousands, but hundreds of thousands of years old. Using an advanced new gene editing technique known as CRISPR, it could now be possible to alter the DNA sequence of an Asian elephant to create a hybrid animal, a creature with many of the characteristics of the mammoth. Scientists even have a name for such a beast, the mammophant. And in September 2021, a company was launched to do just that. Technology and software entrepreneur Ben Lamb and renowned Harvard Medical School geneticist Dr. George Church have co-founded what they call a de-extinction company. Named Colossal, it aims to genetically engineer elephant embryos with mammoth DNA. These hybrids would be implanted in a surrogate elephant mother, or maybe even partially grown in an artificial womb. Unlike many similar attempts, Colossal has the funds, to the tune of $15 million. And according to Church, the first mammophant calves could be born by 2027. Because the complete genetic sequence is known, it might, over time, then be possible to edit out any remaining elephant DNA to produce a creature very close to a true mammoth. Colossal says its work will help to save other endangered species and also help fight climate change. Reintroducing mammoths to Siberia, they argue, will help to restore the ancient grasslands in which they once roamed. Now covered by forests and bleak, frozen tundra. In theory, these grasslands would help trap more carbon from our atmosphere. Snow cover in winter would help reflect more heat from the sun back into space. Unlike the darker forest and tundra which absorb heat, helping to warm the planet. The mammoths would also trample and compact the snow, helping to maintain the permafrost, which at present is melting fast, with serious consequences for climate change. Similar thinking has already been seen in the setting up of Pleistocene Park in Siberia. A team led by Sergei and Nikita Zimov has begun to recreate the habitat in which mammoths thrived. Already, they have reintroduced many of the surviving types of animals that shared it with the mammoths creating an environment where Colossal's mammophants might thrive. Dr. Church claims to have already completed much of the gene editing necessary to adapt the African elephant's genetic code. Other teams around the world also claim to be close to producing mammoth-elephant hybrids. So, some believe it really might not be long until we actually do see living mammoths roaming their ancient homelands once more. But can all this really happen? And should it happen? Plenty of scientists say no. According to Victoria Herridge, a researcher at UK's Natural History Museum, you have to start asking questions about the ethics of experimentation on elephants. Is this a new species? What impact would it have? In the words of researcher Adrian Lister, it would take huge herds of mammoths to do this again, and we shouldn't kid ourselves that we are smart enough to predict all the possible unintended side effects. There are still plenty of practical issues to overcome, too. Though cloning technology is much improved, no one knows whether a mammoth-elephant hybrid could survive. Elephants themselves are an endangered species and very difficult to breed in captivity. Only one actual attempt has so far been made to bring an animal back from extinction, and it failed. The last Pyrenean ibex died in the year 2000 but attempts to recreate it just three years later using closely related animals weren't successful. The only baby that survived past birth lived for just seven minutes, 
Trying to revive a creature with no close relations that has been dead for thousands of years will be many times harder. Other scientists doubt that even with specially created habitats, that living mammoths would be able to survive and breed again. As for releasing them into the wild, to somehow recreate their own environment, what would happen to the ecosystem that's there now? Some of the arguments might possibly work for mammoths, but Jurassic Park showed exactly why reintroducing T. rex to its old habitat definitely wouldn't be a good idea. On top of everything else, some critics claim it's simply a waste of resources. Research of this kind is incredibly expensive and many argue there are more important problems we should be spending money on. If these extinct creatures died out naturally once, should we really upset the current balance of nature by trying to turn the clock back? But if companies like Colossal do manage to bring mammoths back from extinction, it may well open the door to even more incredible possibilities and dangers. Technology is developing so quickly that DNA from creatures that lived over a million years ago has now been retrieved. That's still a long way from the 66 million years that we need to reach back in order to retrieve DNA from dinosaurs. But incredibly, some researchers are claiming that they have already achieved just that. In 2009, a team led by paleontologist Mary Higby Schweitzer announced that they had discovered flexible soft tissue residue in the fossilized remains of a Brachylophosaurus. On examination, it appeared to still contain preserved collagen plus bone and red blood cells. That alone is a huge step forward. But in the years since, her team and others claim to have also found evidence of DNA in dinosaur remains the breakthrough that might eventually lead to dinosaurs coming back from the dead, using the very same techniques that are already becoming available. Those results are still very controversial and not accepted by many other scientists. But as technology continues to develop, the possibility that dinosaur DNA will be found increases every day. It seems that more than 30 years after Michael Crichton's books were written, reality might just be catching up with them and the consequences could be just as unexpected. So let's hope scientists also learn from the warnings these books and films contain, before, as one of the characters said, the running and screaming starts. Thanks for watching, Elder Fox. Remember to like and subscribe.